Hello guys. Let's get back together for a few minutes today and let's talk about something that's called polynomials. We're not going to add them or multiply them or divide them or any of that. We're just going to get a good understanding of what polynomials are. And the kind of strategy that I'm using in this segment to explain this to you and to suggest that you use is something that is called two column notes and sometimes it's called Cornell notes. And all that means is that it is the way that the notes are organized because your brain works better when your work is organized in some way. And this is just one way. So on the left hand I've got two columns. One is very small and the other one is quite large. And, and ideally you'd have this for about a third of your page and this for the rest, the other two thirds. So over here this column is just for the main ideas. And this column over here, the, the bigger space, is where I'm going to explain things and write details. So these are called main idea and detail notes. Alright, the first thing that we're going to look at is what I mean by the word term. I've used that loosely in other segments, but we haven't really talked about what a term is. So a term is, for an example, a term would be 7 x. There's nothing being added or subtracted in a term. And that's really all that you need to say about a term. It, it is any group of, of numbers or variables or exponents or all of those, but nothing's added or subtracted and therefore it is considered to be one term. It can be really, really big. It can be small just like the number Four, that is a term. The, the number 144, that is a term. That's one term. If I were to add that together, like if I were to put 7x plus 144, that is no longer a term. That has actually become two terms. If I put something here that says 3x to the second power, Nothing's being added or subtracted. It is one term. If I write this right here, 7x divided by 2, that's one term. Nothing's being added or subtracted. So it's one term. It's considered to be one term. Even if I make something that looks like, say, 15a squared bc, it is still, nothing's added and subtracted, so it's considered to be a term. It's just one term. That's what a term is. So a term can have a number in front, but it doesn't have to, but it can. But I could just have this over here for a term. I mean, x all by itself, the variable x, it's a term. It's about as simple as you can get, but it's a term. And technically it does have a number in front. Remember, it has a, an understood one that we don't necessarily see. But it doesn't have a power and exponent. It could. It doesn't have to. It might have a number in front. It might not. It could have a fraction like one-fourth x squared. And that's still a term because it's, nothing's added or subtracted to it. So it's a term. This one might confuse you because it's got two pieces but they're not added or subtracted, so it's a term. So, it could have a negative. It doesn't matter. It would still be a term. If nothing's being added or subtracted to it, it's just a negative. So terms can be negative, but I'm not adding two things together or subtracting two things. All about adding and subtracting. Okay, so a monomial is really just an expression a, it, where you only have one term. A binomial, so let's kind of highlight this M-O-N-O, -O, which always it has something to do with just one, just one. And if I'm talking about a binomial, then when we get to that one, I'm going to be showing you some that have two terms. And then when we get to the one that says trinomial, you know what tri means, and you know it means three. So this one's going to have three terms. 
And you don't really use any of these term any of this terminology or vocabulary in arithmetic. So this is definitely a way that they are different. But it's a little bit of the sophisticated vocabulary that we will talk about very quickly later in the course. You've got to learn it really well. So let's take a look. An example of two terms, it's probably easier to start there. An example of two terms would be something like 3xy plus 4. You see how there are two terms there? There's this term right here. That's one term. And then there's another term. And the reason that that's two terms is because they're being added together. I could have this one. I could have x squared minus 5. And that's two terms subtracted. So that's considered to be what we call a binomial. If it's two terms, it's a binomial. If I have something like 4x plus 2x. Now that's kind of tricky because that looks like two terms. It is a term and a term and it is added together. But you know that you always have to simplify whenever you can. So you would ever leave something 4x plus 2x because you know that that really should be written as 6x. And then when you write something as 6x, that's not two terms. That's one term. So I'm going to say no, that, that's not a binomial. It doesn't belong there. It belongs up here under one term. So 6x would be an example of, a, of one term or of a monomial. So another monomial could be negative 7x squared y to the third. See, it can be complicated. It can have negatives. It can have fractions. Let's say we've got negative 1 fourth, and then we've got a... B, C on top, and E on the bottom. Well, it's pretty complicated, but it's only one term. And so it's called a monomial. And the simplest monomial would just be just a number or just a variable by itself. Two terms, we've talked about that. And three terms would be one that had three terms. For instance, 3X plus 2Y plus 7W. Well, that's three terms. There's a term. It comes as plus. You know, that's what connects terms. That's a term. Here's a connector. And that's a term. So I have three terms here. And the fancy word for that is trinomial. That's e very easy to remember. Monomial is one term. Binomial is two terms. And trinomial is three terms. Another example of a trinomial would be this one. X to the second power plus 7x plus 12. So it doesn't matter whether it's added or subtracted, positive or negative. It just matters if those are connecting terms together and then how many they're connecting. So that's a term, that's one term, that's one term, that's one term, that's a total of three terms. So we refer to that as a, as a trinomial. It's a trinomial that has three terms. Any of these all together, these are like real specific names, you know? Like your name and my name, they're specific. But polynomials is just a general term. If we want to talk about just any of those, you know, and maybe your textbooks wants to name the whole chapter, it would just say, oh, we're going to learn about polynomials. That means all kind of nomials. Binomials and trinomials and monomials. And then when they get to be bigger than three, we really do just call them polynomials. Because rather than learning on memorizing all those different ones. These are the main ones that we need. There's only one more term that I think we need to, to do now that we haven't done yet, and it's coefficient, and it's a long word, so I'm going to give myself a little bit, I mean give myself quite enough space there. Here's the word coefficient. It's C O E F two Fs I C I E N T. 2x. So a coefficient is the number in front. So if I have 7x, then the coefficient is 7. If I have negative 3x squared, then the coefficient is negative 3. If I just have x all by itself and I don't see anything in front, then what do you think the coefficient is? Right, the coefficient is 1. You don't see it, 
you don't have to write it, but your brain, you know that the coefficient of one is one. If you needed to know it, to work with it, you would know that the coefficient is one. So let's look at one more. Let's say we've got 8x plus 3. And we said, okay, the coefficient is 8 because the coefficient is the number in front of the variable. The number in front of the variable. That's the coefficient. What did we call it when you just have a number stuck out here without a variable? Just a number, a, an arithmetic number. Starts with a C and it's not coefficient. So what is it? Remember from back, it is a constant. Exactly right. Good. It is a constant. So we want to make sure that we get the difference in a constant, which is just a number, and a coefficient, which is the number in front that leads off the term. The coefficient could be a fraction, it could be a positive and negative, it could be a decimal, it could be one, you know. And I will use both of these terms a lot, so you will pick them up. Go ahead and get very familiar with them. And um, consider this like the very beginning of a new world, because we're really going to take off into polynomials and we're going to be doing a lot of things with them before operations are going to continue to surface. Uh, you have a lot of basics to work with now. If we've gone through anything up to this point in any of the segments that you're fuzzy on or not quite sure, it would be a really good time to just stop and pace yourself and go back through and make sure that there's just nothing that's gone by that has a question that you have a question about. So I'm going to ask you to do that, and do that on your own time. There's no rush. You have time. So work on your polynomials. Make sure that you know your main ideas. Make sure you know your, your details here. And we'll use two column notes again sometime. Thank you. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.